In Elixir, import, alias, require, and use are directives that help manage code dependencies and namespaces. Let's define each and see how they can be applied to our analytics reports module that we created in the first video of this project. So I'm going to just go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code and we'll open up our modules, which is on the desktop. All right, and this is a good spot to start. So the import directive allows you to bring functions or macros from a module into the current namespace. So you don't have to use the full module name. So suppose we have a module. I'm gonna create a new one in our inside Elixir. Let's just create one called utilities.ex def module and then inside Elixir utilities, okay? Inside this, let's just create like a real simple format date arity one function, okay? So we're going to do def and then format underscore date and then pass in a date. And then what we're going to do is make it a shorthand function. And all we're going to do is return a formatted date the way we want to see it. So inside of curly braces here, we're going to say date dot month uh, forward slash, and then we're going to inside hashtag curly braces, I'm gonna do date dot day, and then forward slash hashtag curly braces date dot year. So what we'll do is we'll take a, a date time a UTC format, and we're just going to make it real nice, easy, and readable. And now I'm going to hit save. And so we have this really nice format date function, but it's over here in the utilities module. And we want to be able to use it in our analytics report module. So to use import right underneath our documentation here, we can say, um, not, not capital. So import, and then we just have to call that, uh, that module using the namespace dot module name. So it's insight, oh, capital insight, elixir dot analytics or dot utilities. And then we can also, what's cool is not only do we have access now to utilities, but if we only want to be able to use a specific function from utilities, we can do comma only and then colon and then inside a list, you list the functions you want access to. So we can do format underscore date and then colon is the arity of the function because like I said in functions, the arity actually makes them separate functions. So if we had a format date that took two arguments, it would have arity two and that's how you would differentiate between the different functions. So now if we want to use this, Let's go down to our user engagement uh, weekly. And now we have access to our format date. So, whoops, I hit save, okay. So if we wanted to just have a formatted date here, so formatted underscore date variable, and we can call our format date just like it exists in this module. So we just do, see, formatted date, and it just is there because we imported it which is really cool. So anytime you import it, you just have access to everything from that module. Or in our case, if there was multiple functions, we'd only have access to format date. And then we pass in, let's just say date time dot UTC now. And that will give us the current timestamp, which is great. And then our weekly report generated, our weekly report and then we'll say four, and then pass in our new variable, uh, formatted date, just to prove that it works. Oh, format date, not formatted date. Okay, so we call our format date function. We're saving that format to formatted date, and then we're going to return it in our response. So now if we go to our terminal, command space terminal, and then CD into our project minus desktop, modules, and then IEX space dash capital S space mix, everything compiles. And now if we call our generate report and pass for user engagement, for weekly user engagement. So let's see, we have to do insight dot 
analytics report dot generate report and then we want for user underscore engagement comma weekly and now we should have a date in there that we're grabbing from a different module and there you go so user engagement weekly report for 12 4 2023 generated that's pretty cool right so now we have the alias directive that is used to set up an alias for a module so that you can call it with a shorter name so if you have a module named, I don't know, engagement calculator or something like that, even make this in a, let's, let's make a different directory. So new folder and let's call this calculations and inside calculations, we have a new file and let's call it engagement underscore calculator. So super long name, right? And then in here, we just have to create the module. All right. And then let's just create a simple function that's just going to return a string for now, just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to say calculate engagement and then do end. And then we're just going to say returns calculations. All right. So now if we head back to our analytics report, Underneath our import, let's go ahead and create an alias. So we can say alias, and now we have to do our namespace calculations dot engagement calculator. And so that name is really long, right? And we can use, so let's just go down to our, our sales generate report. Now we do have access to this. We can say, so in engagement, calc equals, and we can say engagement calculator dot calculate engagement, right? But engagement calculator is so long. With aliases, it's really nice. So if we wanted this shorter, we can do comma as colon and then say calc. So we just made this now usable as calc. All right, and then let's just go ahead that our weekly or our sales monthly report generated with and we'll just pass in our variable engagement calc just to prove that it works and now if we go to our ix shell we recompile everything and then if we do insight um, anal dot analytics reports and then we want to say generate report. And then this is going to be, we want to do pattern matching for sales, comma, monthly. And now when we hit enter, we're going to see monthly sales report generated with our engagement message. And that's how alias works. So with returns calculations. Pretty cool. Hi, I'm Jacob. I help companies build scalable fault tolerance systems in Elixir. With over a decade of experience, I specialize in solving complex technical challenges, whether that's architecting new systems, implementing real-time processing, or scaling existing applications. I work with teams worldwide to deliver high-performance solutions that deliver results. If you need help with your next Elixir project, visit elixirmentor.com to schedule a call. Now, Require is used specifically for macros. It ensures that a given module is compiled and loaded to use its macros. So let's go ahead and create some macros. In, we'll just go inside our Insight Elixir, new file, and let's just call this report underscore uh, macros.ex and then create it as a module. Now you're not gonna understand anything I'm really typing right now and I'm not gonna get into it. So just for now, just know that macros um, basically allow for metaprogramming. That's writing code that writes other code. This allows developers to extend the language's syntax and capabilities in more custom ways. And so macros are expanded and executed at compile time, not at runtime. This means they can be modified, generated, and inject code during the compilation process, which is really cool. And like I said, we'll get more into that later. We're just using this as an example so you understand how require works. So we're just going to create a def macro and we're going to call it log underscore report underscore 
generation and it's going to take t a type as an argument. And then you just inside of a quote do block. And we can just say IO puts and we're just going to return generating, generating, and then return type. And we have to just unquote it. And just follow along for now. Just know that we're going to just be printing the type we pass in in a string. And we'll get into what quote and unquoting means in our macro section. But this is a macro. So save that. And then when we go over to our analytics report, now to get access to that macro, we can just say require and then report macros. We accidentally got, oh, it made an alias because I didn't put the full, uh, I didn't put the namespace dot report macros. So there we go. We have our report macros required. And now how can we use these? Let's go down to just user engagement function. You can kind of pick any function. I'm just proving that um, these things work and we have access to the modules. So if we do report macros dot log generation, and then we can just log report generation, and then we can just pass in the type. And I'm just going to say user underscore engagement here because that is the type of report we're creating. And then if we go to our terminal and we recompile everything, now when we say inside elixir dot analytics report dot generate report, and we just pass in user underscore engagement, we're gonna get the response with this type in the string. So user engagement report generated, did I type something wrong? User engagement, user engagement. Oh, I probably didn't recompile, did I? Recompile, oh, I did. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's returning the, whoops, I don't wanna, I wanna just comment out. So you always return the last executed piece of code. We are recording or returning this message, not this message. So comment out that or delete it, however you wanna do it and then hit recompile. That's actually a good example of how returning values works. And now when we go ahead and call this function again, now we see that generating, yeah, so generating, and then the type is user engagement report. So it's calling our macro now. So generating uh, user engagement report. So that's pretty sweet. That's how require works. And then we have the use directive. It's more flexible instruction that essentially means inject the specified modules code into the current context. It's often used in conjunction with macros to extend the capabilities of the current module. So if we create, let's just let's create a new module inside, inside Elixir, uh, not folder, new, Okay, and we're going to just call this one uh, report setup.ex and then def module, perfect. We'll create another macro and you don't have to know anything that I'm doing, just know that it's a macro, okay? So def, oh my gosh, def macro and we're going to say underscore, underscore using underscore, underscore and then in parentheses, underscore, so no argument that we care about. And then inside of a quote block, do and, and then def, and then we have a header function and then do. And this is just going to say return report generated by insight elixir. All right, and then save it. And then let's jump back to our analytics report. Basically, to get full use of our report setup, we can just do use and then inside Elixir dot report setup. And then if we go down to, I don't know, generate, let's just put it in the sales one here. I'm going to comment out this response. And then up above, we don't have to do, so we have that whole macro written, right? 
And now since we used use, we have access to the function header inside of it. All we have to do is hit, is type in header opening and closing parentheses, and we have access to this macro. So that is how you would use use. It's basically like injected. It's like, just think of it as being in this def module essentially. So let's save that and then recompile. And now when we do insight, come on insight analytics report dot generate report for sales. Now we get report generated by insight elixir. The elixir directives import alias require and use provide powerful and flexible ways to manage your code dependencies, enhance code readability and facilitate module design in your projects. By skillfully applying these directives in the analytics reports module, you can create a well-organized, maintainable, and efficient code base. It's perfectly suited for the complex and evolving needs of analytics reporting. I'll see you in the next video.